Folks are still making their way in. It's a beautiful before. day. No, they didn't tell me about before. I knew it was going after. My suit started out a little lighter blue than it is now. Okay, I appreciate you letting me know that. We have an approach that's being made. And while folks are just coming in, maybe they'll just... Uh, wonderful crowd here today. Thank you so much for coming to honor our war dead. We are waiting for an approach. the heavens to your right, feel free. Would you please stand in preparation, and ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Kentucky Army National Guard. UH-60 Blackhawks, Mike Model. Pilot Chief Warrant Officer 5, Stephen Bowling, Lieutenant Colonel Dwayne Lewis, and Lieutenant Jonathan Strayer, and Lieutenant Christine England. Ladies and gentlemen, please be prepared for a loud noise. JB! Cannon.
to be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, from Kentucky to LA, there is pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. Barbecues taking place if they haven't already started happening somewhere. A lot of things will be happening because this is a day that we celebrate as in honor to our nation's war dead. What a privilege to be able to stand here for the last, out of the 26 years of my career, 18 of them has been spent serving Kentuckians. And it has been a privilege. And it continues to be a privilege. This is my last ceremony where I will be in the leadership position. And it has been a wonderful thing. And I used to always tell even my employees that would say, oh, I just love that. And my saying was, never love anything that won't love you back. And I thank God that I've been in Kentucky for those 18 years. And I love my job. Kentucky has loved me back. And I appreciate that very much. All because we have the privilege and the honor to serve veterans. I remember my uncle coming back. I was just a little guy from World War II. He left a boy, came back a man, different, changed. But he went on to become a sergeant in the San Diego Police Department. Productive. Veterans are productive people, folks. Oh, you didn't hear me. Veterans are productive people. My other uncle was during, during Korea, and I was old enough to remember when he came home. He went as a boy also, came back as a man. He looked good in that uniform. I remember, I want to be just like Uncle Amos. <laughs> but he was much taller. He became very productive. It goes right out of my mind. I've aged since then. But the first rocket that went off, do you remember what it was? Because I've forgotten. 
but he was part of that lifting off process. Another veteran, very productive. He talked about that until the day he died. Veterans. But here we're talking about those that are not able to hear what we have to say. But their descendants are here. Sons, daughters, wives, just somebody that cares. Because somebody was willing to pay the ultimate price if they had to. Did they want to? Not necessarily so. I can remember incidental. I was scared to death. Things happened I never thought it would happen since I was an infant. You'll have to think about that one. Well, I'll tell you what. It is a privilege to have served in the United States Air Force from 63 to 67. My little brother-in-law went off just out of high school, 17. He came back different, very different than when he left. He never talked about it as he would shuffle off on his prosthesis. But he always stood tall when that flag was raised. You know, it's all about shed blood, it seems like, isn't it? It took the shed blood of the Christ to give us spiritual freedom. And it takes the natural blood of your sons and your daughters and your grandsons and even great-grandsons. And I'm so privileged to have served all these years. And one more time, they said, when are you going to retire, Mr. LeVette? I said, right after Memorial Day, because I want to say goodbye. No, I changed that since then. I'll see you later. At this time, I would like to thank you and to introduce our chairman of the Central uh, Kentucky Veterans Committee. Uh, he's done a marvelous job along with the co-chair, uh, Don Thornton, and I don't know if they have their little things on them or not. It identifies the people on the committee, but they do a wonderful job. You know, for this short time, oh, it takes a lot of preparation. You know what I'm talking about, Miss Henry? <laughs> You, you wonder how in the world and it happened it's over it's so quick but what a jam-packed one hour ladies and gentlemen would you please welcome nick mcmanus good morning everyone first of all we'd like to know how many people are here in camp nelson for the very first time would you raise your hand please very first time in camp nelson wow there are a lot how about first time to a ceremony here at Camp Nelson? A little, out, a little higher so we can see you. Wow, lots. Miss Henry, good. Okay, well, there's a lot that's going to happen here today in a short period of time. First of all, again, my name is Nick McManus. I represent the 15 members of the Central Kentucky Veterans Committee that uh, plans and organizes the activities and ceremonies here at Camp Nelson. I also come by way of the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary, which I've been a member of for eight years. We honor you for being here today. You had a choice, you had lots of choices. You could be at the lake, you could be at picnics, you could be anywhere you wanna be. But for some reason, we all came to either honor our families, our friends, those that came before us, um, those that are maybe in service now. The very first time that I came to Camp Nelson was about four years ago on this day. I walked through those gates down there with my dad's picture in my pocket and his dog tags from World War II in my pocket as well, not ever, ever knowing what was going on up here. I knew there was a ceremony, I knew things were going on up here, but I walked in and I said, wow, this is amazing. And the further I walked back into the back of the cemetery, back into the Civil War area, I began to even get more goosebumps as to what the history and the meaning of this this place is. These are called hallow grounds, the field of stone, the garden of stone, as they say. But so many, so many memories, so many, so much history that goes on here. Uh, we have um, provided you with a program. We're going to ask for a show of hands in a second who doesn't have a program. But inside that program is also an insert that we did this time for the first time, primarily because. 
we began to talk about the fact that so many of you, so many of us, even if we live here in Jessamine County, we don't know the history of Camp Nelson. We don't know about that big white house that sits up on the hill and these 4,000 acres and the history that took place here from 1861 to 1866. Just a five-year time period that really put this on the map. So we hope that you appreciate that. We thank um, Peggy uh, McClintock from Heritage Park and also the folks from from uh, Lockheed Martin for putting that together. So first of all, who does not have a program because you're gonna need that for today's ceremony? Fellas, if you will, please come down the aisle and, and uh, hand out the programs. Where are the Coast Guard guys? And there they are, folks from Lockheed Martin. Okay, we need some programs up front here too. The reason I say this is because we're not going to make announcements and announcing a lot of the things that go on during the ceremony, so please follow along as we go. Okay, programs. Okay. Our guys were standing back there a minute ago. Okay, at this time, we'd like you to stand for the invocation, if you will, please. Please remain standing for the presentation of colors. Let us pray together. Our God and our Father, we are grateful for this beautiful day, for the privilege of being on this hill honor those who gave so much that we might have liberty and freedom. And so, Lord, we come before you with thanksgiving. You have the power to raise up nations and to bring them down. You have the power to keep us and prosper us or to take it all away. So have mercy upon us, we pray, O oh Lord, this day. We remember our Father with those brothers and sisters beginning at Arlington National Cemetery in our capital, going around the world to the beaches of Normandy, through the Pacific at the great National Cemetery in Honolulu, and the nearly 1,700 sailors and Marines who are still entombed on the Arizona. Across this nation to the small hamlets and villages and towns and country sides where people come together to remember that our freedoms cost us a great deal. Oh Lord, not only have we come to pay our respect and to honor those who rest here from their battles, but we're here also today to ask that you would renew our patriotism, our love of nation, and our love of you. I pray you'd make us more noble sons and daughters, more honorable fathers and mothers, more courageous citizens, more righteous leaders. And I pray that you would stand with those who are on the watch today to keep us safe. Thank you for this great committee that put this together and called us here. May you honor them for their good works. Now we ask all of this, Lord, in the name of of our Savior Jesus Christ, who also shed his blood for us. We are grateful indeed. Amen. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Who's brought stripes and bright stars?
Ladies and gentlemen, I have been brought to you to, here today for the hearing impaired. <laughs> Welcome to our hallowed ground. I want to introduce you to Brayden Mefford, member of Troop 382 out of Lexington, Kentucky. Member of the Kuwaita Lodge and Order of the Arrow. Let's hear it for our Boy Scouts. <laughs> My name is J.B. Reynolds and I wear a few hats. I am the Vice President of the Rolling Thunder Chapter in Lexington, Kentucky, Chapter 5. It's our job to bring awareness to the POW MIA issue. To let people know that there are still in excess of 80,000 service members still listed as missing in action or prisoners of war. That's unacceptable on any level. We help our government correct the past to protect the future. I'm also one of nine senior ride captains with the Patriot Guard Riders of America for the state of Kentucky. It's our job to show respect for our fallen service members and protect their families from the indiscretions of others. And I'm also an assistant scoutmaster with Troop 382, and I'm the commander of the Bluegrass Council Flag Corps for the Boy Scouts of America. It's our job there to build faith-based decision makers. We as veterans, we, we cut and we joke up with each other and, and tease each other about our branches of service. We have a little sibling rivalry. And being a Marine, I noticed that the Navy seems to take it a little harder than others. <laughs> I can get away with saying that because I am the son, the proud son, of a retired United States Navy World War II veteran. <laughs> My father reminds me that the Marine Corps is the Department of the Navy, and I remind him, we're the men's department. <laughs> I do it with a salute, though, because I don't like doing push-ups. <laughs> but all joking aside, at the end of the day, we have a few things in common as veterans. We're all on one team. We're all in one fight. Evil people fear us. And righteous people pray for us. We all serve under the same flag. I'm reminded of a story that Johnny Cash told. I want to share it with you now. He said, as I walked through a county courthouse square, on a park bench, an old man was sitting there. He said, your courthouse there, it's kind of run down. He said, no, nah, it'll do for our little town. He said, your flagpole there, it's lean quite a bit. Man, that's a ragged old flag you got hanging on it. He said, have a seat, and I sat down. He said, is this the first time you've been in our little town? I said, I think it is. He said, well, son, I don't like to brag. We're pretty proud of that ragged old flag. You see, we got a hole in that flag right there the night Washington carried it across the Delaware. It got powder burned the night Francis Scott Key set up watching it, writing, oh, say, can you see? It almost fell in New Orleans. Packingham and Jackson tugging at its seams. It almost fell again at the Alamo beside the Texas flag. She waved on, though. It got cut with a sword at Chancellorsville. It got cut again at Shiloh Hill. It was Robert E. Lee and Beauregard and Bragg. Lord, the south wind blew hard on that ragged old flag. And on Flanders Field in World War I, and she took a big hit from a Bertha gun. She turned blood red in World War II. She hung limp and low a time or two. She went off to Korea and Vietnam, Bosnia, Iraq, and Afghanistan, everywhere she was sent by her Uncle Sam. She's waved on the ships on a briny foam. 
Do you know they're back quit waving her here back home? In her own land, she's been abused. She's been burned, dishonored, denied, and refused. The government for which she stands has been scandalized throughout this land. She's getting threadbare and she's wearing thin. She's in good shape for the shape she's in. She's been through the fire before. We believe she can take a whole lot more. Don't worry, Trump. So we raise her up every morning. We bring her down slow every night. We never let her touch the ground. We fold her up just right. And he came to his feet and he spoke with some lead. He raised his right hand up to his forehead. Said on second thought, boy, I do like to brag. Because we're mighty proud of that ragged old flag. white stars. They represent 50 individual states, each having their own rules, their own laws, and their own regulations. They lay evenly spaced, showing that one is no more important than the other. Yet they lay off the blue field, denoting their loyalty to the one union, which is incidentally the name of that area of the flag. There are 13 stripes. They represent the 13 original colonies that had the intestinal fortitude to stand up against what was then the most powerful nation on the face of the earth and say no more. No more tyranny, no more oppression, no more. Six of those stripes are white. They represent the purity and the righteousness on which this nation was founded. And the seven that are red, the beginning and the end, they represent the valor and the blood lost, past, present, and future in defense of our country and in defense of our way of life. Ladies and gentlemen, we would be honored if you are able, would you stand with us this day as we pledge our allegiance to this symbol of our living nation. myself and the Boy Scouts of America, may our God place a hedge of protection around you in your travels this day. I say to you, Fortuna Fave Paratus, fortune favors the prepared. Wow, how do I follow that? I won't even try. I'll let a band play. This time, the West Jessamine High School Band is going to play the Patriotic Armed Forces Medley. And uh, I'm going to give those of you that don't know the sequence, the sequence goes like this. Our Navy, Army, Marines, Coast Guard, and then Air Force. And we ask all veterans of each of those services, when your medley is played, we ask that you stand and be honored as we do that. And there is a Navy guy that told me that the Army guys probably don't know what their song sounds like, so we'll call it. <laughs> Scores 1-0. <one> <laughs> uh. United States Navy. Please stand. United States Army.
United States Coast Guard and Coast Guard Auxiliary. United States Air Force. Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, the West Chestnut High School County Band, Patrick Van Lorsdale. Thank you, Patrick and gang. Great job, year after year. Well, we're having fun, aren't we? Honoring our war heroes, our war dead. I think they would want us to enjoy ourselves. That's what they died for. I would like to do something uh, that I, I, I get a big thrill. Yeah, thrill. I enjoy it. We have dignitaries that come from different parts of Kentucky that uh, they have become friends of the Camp Nelson National Cemetery and we're happy that they show up year after year. Uh, they don't have to be invited, they, they just show up and we appreciate that. And I would I'd like to introduce them and thank them for coming once again. Dave West to my left here, he, uh, he's our executive county judge, Jesuit County. And I believe next to him, Pete, is that you? Pete Sutherland, our right Reverend Mayor of Nicholasville. We're so happy that he's here. And just skip over a little bit. We have the, our other participants taking place. Hank Cott for Kevin Corman and the organization that protects us from the gate outside. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, man and ladies for me. And standing or sitting. I never know him. <laughs> Our state representative, folks, would you welcome Russ Meyer. And I, I don't think, I didn't see Barry Waldrop. If you're here, shame on you. We would like to, is he here? All right. But Barry uh, is also a friend of the cemetery also. And uh, I would also like to, to uh, welcome and introduce to you to some maybe you didn't know. But we are uh, so pleasantly surprised and pleased that our congressman, the Honorable Andy Barr, is with us. Congressman, would you come? Go, Andy. Lexington and Concord, Bunker Hill, Yorktown, the Alamo, Bull Run, Antietam, Gettysburg, San Juan Hill, Bella Wood, Argonne Forest. Pearl Harbor, Midway, Guadalcanal, Normandy, Battle of the Bulge, Iwo Jima, Pusan Perimeter, Chosen Reservoir, Quezon, Hamburger Hill, the Persian Gulf, New York City, the Pentagon, Fallujah, Ramadi, Helmand, Cunard. These are the names of just a few of the places where American patriots fought and died for their country. It is an honor to be with you this morning to remember these heroes, soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, who literally gave all so that we might be free. It's a pleasure to be here with Heather French Henry, a tireless advocate for our veterans, with the Patriot Guard, the, the West Jessamine Band, and it's especially an honor to be here in the company of Gold Star families and so many of you who have served our nation in uniform. So to all the veterans here, thank you for your service. It is appropriate to mark this day at the Camp Nelson National Cemetery. Like this cemetery, the roots of Memorial Day go back to the Civil War and its aftermath. In 1868, the same year, the remains of thousands of Union soldiers were reinterred in this cemetery. Major General John Logan declared Decoration Day would be observed on May 30th at the Arlington National Cemetery. In 1971, Congress declared Memorial Day 
as a national holiday out of respect for those who had died in all American wars throughout history. Since the very founding of our republic, the United States has been blessed with extraordinary citizens who committed themselves to a cause larger than themselves, who rose to the occasion and answered the call to fight and in some cases die for this country. Memorial Day is a day of remembrance when we mourn the loss of those brave souls, the men and women of the United States Armed Forces who gave their all in the cause of liberty. Memorial Day is a day of reflection that gives the nation and all of us here an opportunity to honor all those who made the ultimate sacrifice to confront evil and to defeat it. Who are these heroes? In the words of Vietnam veteran Special Forces Stu Weber, they are tender warriors. He wrote, the warrior function is unmistakable in scripture. Within the epistles, the mature believing man is often described in militant terms. A warrior equipped to battle mighty enemies and shatter satanic strongholds. The heart of the warrior is a protective heart. The warrior shields, defends, stands between and guards. He invests himself in the energy of self-disciplined, aggressive action. A warrior is not one who loves war or draws sadistic pleasure from fighting or bloodshed. There is a difference between a warrior and a brute. A warrior is a protector. Men stand tallest when they are protecting and defending. This year, once again, we express our gratitude to the greatest generation, the American protectors and defenders who confronted evil, defeated tyranny, and literally saved the world from a millennium of darkness. Today, we face a new kind of evil, as radical Islamic terrorism threatens the freedom of the civilized world. And so we pay tribute to the courage and sacrifice of those patriots currently serving in Iraq, Afghanistan, the Middle East, and around the world to selflessly protect and defend the American people. This year, we are particularly reminded of the sacrifice of Air Force Captain Matthew Rowland of Lexington. His father, Colonel Mark Rowland, is with us here today. Matthew was killed in a roadside ambush while serving in Afghanistan on August 26, 2015. Captain Rowland graduated in 2006 from Lexington Catholic High School where he was a member of the National Honor Society and ran cross country. He was recognized as a born leader, motivated and dedicated to all that he did, demonstrated by his achieving the rank of Eagle Scout in high school. He earned an appointment to the United States Air Force Academy where he graduated in 2010. Captain Rowland was an officer in the 23rd Special Tactics Squadron. He deployed three times in his five years of service, serving in many locations around the world. Last October, I traveled to Afghanistan, where I met with General John Campbell, Commander of the United States and International Security Assistance Forces Resolute Support Mission, and some of our troops at Bagram Air Base outside of Kabul. After a national security briefing, briefing at Bagram, an Air Force colonel named, Capt named Espinosa approached me. He introduced himself and he thanked me for honoring Captain Rowland in a speech I had delivered a few weeks earlier on the House floor. I will never forget Colonel Espinoza or the words he shared with me that night. He said, what you don't know about Captain Rowland is that he saved my life that night and the lives of several more men under my command. Even as he lay mortally wounded, he called us by radio to warn us that there was enemy ambush ahead. And that was the last act Matthew Rowland made on earth. The Gospel of John describes what is in the heart of the American warrior. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I recently read the New York Times bestseller, Fearless, the undaunted courage and ultimate sacrifice of Navy SEAL 6 operator Adam Brown. This is a story of heroism, heroism and humanity, and it captures the heart of the American warrior. It is a portrait of a highly trained warrior who would enter a village with weapons to ha in hand to hunt terrorists only to come back the next day with an armload of, sh of shoes and meals for local children. This is how the story begins. 
When Adam Brown woke up on March 17, 2010, he didn't know he would die that night in the Hindu Kush mountains of Afghanistan, but he was ready. 7,000 miles away in a suburb of Virginia Beach, his 10-year-old son Nathan was worried about him. From the moment he opened his eyes that morning, he felt something bad was going to happen to his daddy, but he kept it to himself, rolled out of bed, and got ready for school. On a previous deployment, Adam had written in his journal to both Nathan and Savannah, Nathan's seven-year-old sister, a letter they weren't meant to see unless the worst happened. I'm not afraid of anything that might happen to me on this earth, because I know no matter what, nothing can take my spirit from me. How much it pains me to think about not watching my boy excel in life, or giving my little girl away in marriage. Buddy, I'll be there. You'll feel me there when you steal your first base, smash someone on the football field, make all A's. I'll be there for you in all your achievements. But much more, buddy, I'll be there for you in every failure. Remember, I know tears, I know pain and disappointments. I will be there with you with every drop. You cannot disappoint me, I understand. So as we honor Captain Rowland, Navy SEAL Adam Brown, and all those lost in battle. As Memorial Day passes, as the parade, ceremonies, and picnics fade away, and as the unofficial start of summer begins, let us remain mindful beyond this particular holiday of what lies in the heart of the American warrior. Let us honor the fallen, but let us do more. Let us honor what they fought to protect and defend. Thank you again for having me. May God bless the American warrior. May God bless the United States. Thank you, Congressman. You know, this is a, again, a wonderful day. And when they, the, uh, when the committee came and they said, oh, guess what? I think we can get Miss Heather French Henry to come. They were fighting on who was going to get to escort her or introduce her. Would you believe that? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe she really needs an introduction, but may I present to you our special guest speaker today, Miss Heather French Henry. Channel and hearing a lot of stories from my father 
A lot of the battles were the same. The Vietnamese were heavily entrenched underground. There was a tunnel system still that they're discovering. And as I watched one particular story of taking of Hill 724, my, sad, my dad said that's exactly the way every single battle in Vietnam took place. Every time we went out, we were ambushed. We were never prepared. We went in with one hand behind our back and a blindfold on, not knowing what was about ready to happen. And on December 27th, 1967, it happened yet again. They caught an Operation Badger Tooth. You can look it up online. It's a very detailed history of that battle. They went in as the Suicide Battalion. I had to tell you, not the most encouraging name of a battalion, the Suicide Battalion, especially when my father, when his feet first hit the ground in Vietnam, the gentleman said, sir, you've got a 45 minute life expectancy over here as a Marine in Vietnam. Yes, sir, sir, yes, sir. Not very encouraging. But on December 27, 1967, they were in the heated battle, and my father was wounded and medevaced out. And he went on to the Valley Forge, not knowing that about 30 of his men would die that day. But also not knowing that his best friend, Charlie Smith, would survive and would move on to several other battles. Now, when my father came home, he served the rest of his time at Camp Lejeune, and he was medically retired at the end of 71. He came home knowing what happened to those 30 men that day because he got a detailed record. They're all on panel 32E on the Vietnam Memorial in about five lines. It starts with Larry Gonzalez. And every time we're in Washington, D.C., we go to that particular panel. And my dad looks at the wall and he puts his hand on the wall. And the beautiful, the beautiful point of that memorial is you can see your reflection in those names. You are a part of them and they are forever a part of you. That's the healing and the remembrance. So many years later, when you fast forward after my Miss America year, my dad had told me a story several times of his best friend, Charlie Smith. And I think the older he has gotten, the more stories that he is willing to tell. Of course, I'm a daddy's girl, certainly. I'm proud. My dad is my greatest hero ever in the United States. And so I thank you. I appreciate that. And so he started telling me stories about Charlie. And I'll never forget, I was in Washington, D.C., one of the many times at the wall. Every time I go, I go to the wall. And I looked in the book. If you haven't been to the wall, there are books. And all the names are in there in alphabetical order. And then you go find them on the appropriate panel, which is in chronological order for when they were killed in action. And so I decided one time to look up Charlie Smith's name. That had not said, I want you to do this, but I took it upon myself. There were a long list of Charlie Smith in the book, but there was only one from Louisville, Kentucky. I called my dad, and I said, Dad, I know you didn't ask, and I said, but I looked up Charlie Smith's name, and unfortunately, he is on the wall. Dad, Charlie Smith died February 28, 1968, just a couple months after you were medevaced out. I could hear my dad's voice crack on the phone. I could hear the sobs from a million miles away back in Maysville, Kentucky. But that moment was a very important moment, not only in the relationship from a father to a daughter, but in the moment and in the, the brokenheartedness and the grieving that my father has had for over 50 years. He has survived with the guilt of not knowing what happened to his best friend. And at that moment, he was able to grieve, but he was also able to heal because he could remember the best of Charlie. And he knew that Charlie had paid the ultimate sacrifice. Charlie is on panel 41E on line 73. And every time we go to the memorial, and my children know this very well as well because I have taught them about the cost of freedom, we go and we visit panel 32E, and we go and we visit panel 41E. And I take a picture of Charlie Smith's name for a very important reason. I have more rubbings of Charlie Smith's name. I don't know if I think they're going to turn out different every single time, but I can't not do it when I'm there. But I took a picture of it uh, just recently, and I texted to a very special gentleman. You see, if you fast forward even a few years beyond my Miss America year, I was in Louisville, Kentucky at a luncheon, and I spoke about Charlie Smith. And this young lady comes up to me and she says, young lady, I have pictures of your father and my brother in Vietnam. And I thought, what? How can you? You're in Louisville. I'm from Maysville and Augusta. And 
she says, you don't understand. My brother was Charlie Smith. And she said, and even more so, I want to introduce you to Charlie Smith Jr., Charlie Smith's son. And just yesterday, I had the complete privilege of having Charlie Smith's family in Jefferson Town, Kentucky, at the Veterans Memorial Park, and Charlie Smith Jr. was there. Every single time I'm at the wall, I text Charlie Smith Jr. a photo of his dad's name because I want that family to know that he will never, ever, ever be forgotten. None of our heroes should ever be forgotten. No sale, no barbecue, it's all for the Thank you. 